Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com and today I'm going to show you how to use a two-part spray foam insulation package. Uh, there's a lot of different manufacturers of these packages so uh, just depend on kind of what's available in your area. Um, even though I'm going to show you how to use this particular one, make sure you for sure read all the safety instructions and the, and the user manual in whatever package you get uh, just to be sure that uh, in case there's any differences from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer. So the one we have today is uh, what they call a 200 kit. So what they're saying is that uh, the yield on it will be about 200 square feet worth of foam at one inch thick. So uh, we're gonna be spraying close to two inches thick here. So we'll, we'll be hopefully getting around 100 square feet out of these two cans at two inches thick. Um, so when I, once I open up the box, uh, some of the first things you find is you're going to find the uh, instruction manual as well as the, the uh, you know, safety equipment that's needed and uh, all little tips and that sort of thing. So make sure you read that over well. Uh, most of these guys have 1-800 uh, uh, numbers and websites as well so if you have other questions you can get a hold of somebody to ask. Uh, you should find an assortment of some different spray nozzles. These guys send two different types and they, they've sent about, uh, I don't know, four or five of each one it looks like. So uh, this particular nozzle here uh, is just for spraying, uh, you know, gaps and cracks sort of thing. It's going to send out a stream. So that would be that one here. This one here is a fan tip. It's got a bit of a V-notch cut in the end. So this one's going to spray out about a, I don't know, it just depends on the kit you're using, but probably eight inch or so uh, fan width of pattern, which is good for filling wall cavities like what we're going to do here. So you'll have a bit of a selection of the, uh, of the tips in there. Uh, this kit comes with two, two containers, two, two steel cylinders. Uh, this particular one already has the hoses and the gun already hooked to it. It does have a, a bit of a carrying handle here as well. Some of the bigger kits, they're going to have tanks, two, two tanks obviously because it's two components, but the tanks are much larger so they come boxed separately just because uh, they're too heavy to, to carry as one unit. Uh, so in here, like I said, this one, the, uh, the gun and the hoses are already attached to the tanks. Some of them you will, it will come with a wrench and you may have to attach your own hoses and, and gun. Uh, a couple things to go over, I guess, since I've got the gun out. Uh, putting on the tips, the gun has a bit of a safety trigger here, this one. So the yellow button down here has to be compressed or pressed before you can actually squeeze the trigger. The tanks are still turned off, by the way, so uh, you don't want to turn them on until you're actually ready to spray. So this gun has a safety on it. To attach a uh, nozzle, just uh, get it orientated right. There's usually some marks in the end of the gun that uh, correspond to the, the way the nozzle looks. And uh, just push it in there. On this one, this little lever here, you should hear it click in like that. And just look to make sure that the little, little lever hooked down on the lock knob on the top of the, uh, of the nozzle. So putting the nozzle on, just like that, taking it off, squeeze this button, pull it off. When you're spraying, uh, if you stop for more than about 30 seconds, you're probably going to find that you'll have to change your nozzle. So it's a good idea. Get yourself all set up, get things out of the way so that once you start spraying, you can just kind of keep going with it and you aren't uh, losing a bunch of time. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to change your nozzles. What happens is the two components come in, each come in their own hose, and once they hit the nozzle, there's a kind of a spirally setup inside of the nozzle here that actually starts to mix the two foams because until the two products mix together they don't actually have the chemical reaction which causes them to expand and cure. So if you stop for too long it starts to set up in here and it clogs and it's not going to work properly so that's why they send you multiple ones. So if you stop, pop your tip off, put a new one on and away you go again. Um, they also, in this bag, sent some uh, petroleum jelly. So what they like you to do is uh, smear some of the jelly right inside of the, uh, the gun here, and that just helps to uh, allow your, uh, your tips not to uh, 
seal up right at the end of the gun so you can just throw your tip away put a new one on and, and everything should be fine so we've got the jelly um, optimally your tanks need to be around uh, are usually about 24 degrees Celsius uh, around so that'd be what I don't know about 79 78 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to get the most yield out of them and to make everything work properly so uh, keep them somewhere stored warm um, you can spray onto a cooler surface but you don't want something that's frosty and wet so it, like here uh, we're, we're doing this in uh, February and it's a below grade so the, the wall is cool but it's actually still about two degrees uh, Celsius so and there's no frost present um, so that's your tanks once we're ready to go we're gonna open both valves on the tanks completely you're gonna see the product start to come down the line uh, once once it uh, fills up the lines oh before that sorry you should shake the tanks really well too uh, I think it's usually around 30 40 seconds you need to agitate the tanks that will uh, just get things mixed together open your valves let it bleed into the lines do your petroleum jelly get your tip ready and uh, and uh, then you're pretty much close to being ready to spray and obviously before that put on all your your protective equipment um, protective equipment uh, these guys recommend if you don't have uh, real good ventilation that you should be wearing a, uh, a respirator similar to this and it's fitted with cartridges that are uh, for organic vapor as well as particle uh, filtration so they're kind of a two-part canister one does the organic part of the chemicals and the other just does the uh, any solids that might be in the air so so it's important to have that if you don't have the proper ventilation uh, we did a did a video uh, with us with a similar product there a while ago and uh, we had a lot of people freaking out because we weren't wearing a mask um, we did talk in the video how we had lots of ventilation and everything but we still had people kind of freaking out so we've actually uh, gonna redo this video uh, today and we don't have the ventilation here quite as good we just were able to open a couple windows uh, so we're gonna use the mask for sure uh, also some rubber gloves to protect your hands you already see that I have the the uh, painter suit on or the body suit on to protect my clothing I'm wearing a hat I'll have safety glasses on uh, so it's just to protect yourself from any spray back that you might get uh, it's, it doesn't happen very often but you never know you could get some bounce back onto you so and it doesn't come off that easily you definitely don't want it in your eyes or your mouth or anything like that so um, so that's per the protective part um, I think uh, I've I've shaken the tanks pretty good we'll give them another little shank, uh, shake before we go uh, just before I actually use a nozzle and I, once I've got the tanks open I'm gonna shoot the gun into a garbage can or a box or in our case we're gonna use a garbage can just to make sure I'm getting two fairly even streams coming out then I'll get my tip on and and start spraying so uh, when you're spraying it's much like uh, kind of in a way like spraying paint if you've ever had to do that uh, we're gonna come up to the wall we want to be about six or eight inches away from the wall and we're just gonna you know regulate our speed by hand to put on the amount that we want to see get on now remember it's gonna expand some so you you don't want to fill the cavity right up right away or uh, once it expands you're just gonna be having to cut it all off because it's it's sticking out too much um, you know so it's simply squeeze the trigger regulate your speed let go of the trigger squeeze and come down again okay so you just keep doing that we're gonna do these some of these spaces here uh, in preparation what we've done any uh, electrical boxes you'll want to tape them up or seal them up because once the foam gets in and around them it'll actually expand into the the open uh, holes and cavities of the box and actually end up inside so you want to prevent that so we've just wrapped this one in some plastic the wiring is fine to be embedded in the uh, spray foam that isn't a problem we've just basically brushed the wall off made sure it wasn't covered in any cobwebs and dust and that um, if the wall is damp or frosty or anything you you want to make sure you warm it up and dry it off before you spray this on it won't bond to the concrete as well um, you will get some probably overspray onto some of your framing materials here we've just got two by twos but uh, that will 
clean off with a scraper fairly easily uh, once it's cured. Um, anything that's around the area that you don't want to get foam on, just poly it up or tape it off or whatever just to be sure you aren't getting some overspray on anything that you didn't want to cover. Um, so we're going to spray some right on this concrete wall. I'm going to go up and do a couple cavities in that wood wall too. Uh, it, it was really just the same thing, but I uh, just thought I'd show it since we can. Um, I think that's pretty much covering everything that uh, I had to talk about. Again, remember just keep your foam canisters at a good temperature. These ones actually have a little uh, temperature gauge on them, so that's kind of handy to know where you're at, but uh, just keep them inside so they're, they're warmed up and good to go. You don't want to directly you know, blast a furnace on them or uh, wrap them in an electrical heat blanket or something like that. Not, nothing that extreme, but just make sure they're warmed up well. Okay, so I'm going to put on my protective equipment. You may not be able to hear me as well with the mask on, so that's why I was trying to cover everything here before I get all suited up. Um, but uh, I may, may do a bit of talking with the mask on, but it may not be that clear. So, so I'm just going to break away here for a minute, get my uh, personal, personal protective equipment on, and then we'll come back and show you how to spray.
Okay, so uh, we've uh, let things sit here for a little bit and uh, let the fumes get out so we can take the mask off and finish up. Uh, you can see it's expanded out nicely. It's nice and firm. Uh, if you get a, a wrong mixture, sometimes you'll get a clogged uh, line or something. Uh, so if you get too much of one of the chemicals, and I can't remember which way it is, you'll actually get soft, mushy foam. And if it goes the other way where the other chemical is, is too much, the foam is really brittle and, and uh, it almost it just doesn't stand up. If you touch it, it actually crumbles away right away where this is, well, this is good. This is nice and firm. That's exactly what we want. So uh, now the next step that uh, we're kind of at, and so, actually something I didn't mention was uh, in most areas, if you spray up the two inches, you more than likely will not have to put the uh, poly vapor barrier on the inside. So just check with your local codes on that. Um, the one thing to consider when doing that, and you, you notice that I put on two to three different coats, like passes, so that uh, those first couple get a chance to actually cure before you cover them up and form that skin over it, which gives you that, that air lock or that air uh, stoppage. Because what's going to happen now, you can see where some of this foam is expanded past the actual framing, so I'm going to go back you know, and trim it back flush. So now if I did, had done that all in one pass, now that I cut that, that probably compromises the vapor barrier qualities of it, where because I've got those couple passes in behind that I'm not going to be cutting into, uh, in my opinion, that's still pretty good. So um, uh, in this case, we're, we're actually only in most, in a lot of this, uh, we're a little less than an inch and a quarter or inch and a half thick. So uh, we'll, we're going to need, and for my area, we're going to need another vapor barrier anyways. But uh, something to consider. So if you're, free, if you're spraying into a two by four wall where you've got the, the uh, ability to, to spray it two or two and a half inches thick, go ahead and do it. Uh, check with your local building authority because you may not have to put a, a vapor barrier over it after. Okay, let's move on. So we've got it all sprayed. You can see I'm just taking a utility knife and just shaving this down flush with the studs and just clean it all up, peel it off. So you just go around and do all that because otherwise if it's sticking out and you go to drywall over top of that, it's, it's going to give you some issues with pop screws and that sort of thing. Okay, so just keep going around. Another thing you can use is the old handy red bar. Scrape things down, get right underneath it, scrape it off like that. Once the uh, foam is, is to its cured point, this is not hazardous anymore. You can throw this right in the garbage. Don't eat it. Throw it in the garbage, but you don't, you don't need the mask. I don't really even need the gloves on anymore, but uh, um, just go around, get things cleaned up so that it's all good for when you want to put the finishing uh, touches over top of it. Uh, what else? Did I uh, forget anything? Uh, I, I, think that, I think that should cover it. Um, so now you've seen uh, how to do it. Uh, this may not be the most economical way if you're going to do a whole basement. Uh, these kits aren't, aren't real cheap. It might be cheaper to actually have a pro come in and, and give you a price to do the whole thing. If you're in a remote area though, this might be the only option you have. If you're going to do a, you know, a couple rooms or a little bit of space, then also again it might, might uh, still be very economical to do it like this. This stuff works really good for joist ends as well. So, and we do have a video on that. So if you want to check that out. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I can tell you. Uh, so that again, I'm Shannon from uh, House Improvements. And uh, if you want to go to our website, you can check out the forum, ask any questions you might have about this on there. And uh, I'll get, get a reply off to you as soon as I can. And also uh, you can check out our YouTube channel and see all the other videos we have. Thanks for coming and watching.